It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Stephen Gary. Stephen Gary. Welcome to a special trade show episode of Rave TV. I'm Steph Beckett. I'm here at DSC 2023, which is also coexisting with LDI 2023. So I am in the, on the DSC show floor right now. Um, I did a little show floor tour that we are going to show you later, like a little bit like right as the show floor opened. Very excited to show you guys what the show floor looks like this year. Um, last year was a very interesting year for DSC, kind of like a phoenix rising from the ashes as it had been a few years since there had been a DSE. Um, this year, it's in its second year. It's really finding its stride. We have so many like digital signage CMS companies here showing like how digital signage is so much more than a billboard, so much more than a piece of di like you know digital technology that you can find in a restaurant. Digital signage is really all around us, and I think that that's kind of the theme of this year's show. And I'm really really excited to show you guys everything that that's about. Um, we've got some product videos coming for you guys. We are shooting this entire show floor as well as the entire LDI show floor. You know, we always work very, very hard and we are so excited to show you guys all of the products that we have kind of talked about. I haven't seen a ton of products yet other than on LDI's show floor, which was open yesterday. So I'll kind of talk a little bit about both. Um, so I want to quick talk about Blue Zoo. That is a cool company. We have a video coming out later about them. This is a company that kind of measures, I guess, how many people come into contact with your piece of digital signage by using a person's cell phone to kind of ping, all right, how many times has someone stopped and looked at this? I thought that was a really cool idea because a lot of what we talk about is how do we measure whether digital signage is successful? And this is kind of an interesting and different way to do that. So definitely check out that company and check out the video that we have coming out about it later. Max Hub is also here. They have a few of their IFPs and a few of their just static digital signage that they can hang, they can put on carts. Um, so it's kind of showing like how digital signage can be used in a conference room, in a school, and many, many different places. So um, I know that you don't want to sit and watch me talk just to myself, so I'm going to invite on our very first guest. This is Jamie Riley from Moment Factory. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much. So of happy course. to be here. Of course. Amazing. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Yeah, absolutely. So, so exciting. I love Moment Factory. Your Thank company you. is so cool. So for our viewers who might not be as familiar, can you talk a little bit about who you guys are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So Moment Factory is a multimedia studio. We like to think of ourselves as a entertainment studio because we really use technology as a means of creating collective moments. So that can be through a pop-up activation or a permanent large-scale installation in an airport, the public space. We do illuminated night walks and forests, botanical gardens. There's no canvas too small or too big for us to create those magical and entertaining moments. You guys are really at the crux of technology and art. And that is like really, really how I think of you guys. Tell me a little bit about your keynote. I know you gave one to the DSC and LDI audience yesterday. Absolutely, and I think you've coined it perfectly because really the focus of my talk was really about how can we utilize technology uh, to create those magical moments and just inspiring a little bit the people who sell the products, who work on the products to, to help them evaluate what the true potential is, mm -hmm. right? So the talk was really focused on uh, some of our projects that we've done and how we've utilized uh, technology to create wonder, but also really trying to expand on that notion of ROI, which of course is very important in the world yeah. we live in, but we like to think of, let's start with the ROE, let's start with a return on emotion, because once people are emotionally engaged, mm -hmm. it's much easier to obtain an ROI, so we're yeah. really about creating those emotional connections, and that yeah. was the, that's what the talk really focused on. Right, because I think that it's one thing to just walk past a piece of digital signage that's giving information and maybe to remember a little bit of about it but when you walk past something that is beautiful that makes you stop like that's so much different you're gonna remember that for the rest of your life absolutely and especially when we utilize interactive technologies so people evolve from a passive participation to an active one mm -hmm. and those really and then when you can influence the content or the narrative it really creates long-lasting memories or even how we can utilize data to reinvent how data is communicated in artful ways and 
how we're consuming information can really, really evolve into meaningful, uh, long-lasting memories. So I wanted to ask a little bit about where that line is because I think so many people in our industry are like, I'm technology. Like, I don't really need for something to look that good. Like, I just, you know, I want to please my customer. I want people to look at it, whatever. Where's that line between like, okay, but, you know, you need to make, like, AV can be beautiful. And it should, can, be. it should be, yes, because it's always about, I think to your point, thinking of the end user mm -hmm. and how can we improve and augment their experience. And the better that is, again, the better impression it will leave with the users and the long, longer lasting memories it will create. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about some installs? So, yeah. I, you know the one I'm going to ask about. Of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I got to ask about this. I think it's round. Yeah, it's I kind of round. round. I've it's, heard it's about it. It's a little it. bit close to uh, here. Where is it? What's the Our, name of it again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Our audience, I know you guys, y'all will not shut up about the sphere. So let's talk about the sphere. Yes, let's talk about the sphere. The sphere, wow, wow. first and foremost. Again, <laughs> pushing the boundaries of what is possible with technology. And we should all be proud. Uh, might we participate in it, contribute to it, or not at all, mm -hmm. because this is a game changer for our industry yeah. and the future of entertainment and venues and so on. So we've had the honor and the pleasure of collaborating on a few projects with the sphere, uh, starting with you two, where we did the content on the exosphere, so, so cool. the exterior, yes. Yeah. Very, very cool, very exciting. And very recently we launched and announced uh, that after you two, Fish will be hosting a series of oh concerts next spring. So we did the content announcing oh. uh, the dates, which I believe are in April, and we will be working with Fish on, on their, the, the production of their show. So more to come with that. Oh and we gosh. did a very special launch uh, with our partners at Epic this past weekend as well. That is so cool. Yes, very cool. Very, very cool and this, exciting. The sphere is so different for our industry because it's very, very rare that people outside our industry like know the things that we nerd out about and are nerding out yes. about. That's them at very the same true. time. The entire world is paying attention. Is paying That's attention such a good to this point. sphere. And it's really interesting because it's not just about the users on site mm -hmm. or in Vegas seeing the sphere, no. but really the impression it's leaving uh, on, on social, social media, media and yeah. media overall. And that's really what makes it uh, very special as well, yeah. is that the experience even on our screens, whatever screen that may be, is still an amazing experience. Yeah, so what's else, what else is on the horizon for you guys, if you can talk about anything Yeah, yet? absolutely. We're actually launching two, three actually, uh, Lumina Night Walks in the United States. Very we cool. actually opened our very first one in New York City at oh, the awesome. Queens Botanical Garden last Tuesday. Cool. Uh, LA is reopening. We did a season last year. And next week we are opening one in Seattle. Oh, so cool. a very, very big year. And if you're traveling through those markets, you should definitely check it out. They are wonderful, wonderful experiences. And uh, it'll be our 19th, 20th, and 21st. So the team, the creative team, have an understanding about how to elevate the experience time and over again. And it's just really uh, absolutely magical. And That's everybody so cool. should check it out. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for thank hopping you. on with me. It's been lovely meeting you and getting Same a chat here. with you about Super this. Fun. So last question I have for you is, where can people find more information about Moment Factory? Momentfactory.com. Awesome. Or you, they can follow us on our platforms, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. We are always uh, very proactive and posting beautiful visuals of all of our yeah. projects. Perfect. Well, thank you so thank much. You I appreciate very much. it. I'm going to invite on our yes. next guest now. This is Susan from Bluefin. Hey, how's Hi. it going? Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm it excited is, to be here. Yeah, and it's kind of it's kind of bumping right now. It is. There's a lot of people coming in, and they're looking us looking at us as they're come, walking by, going, "What are they? Those, what are they doing? I what mean, are they doing? Yeah. Well, I'm used to it at this point, but. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit. You were kind of here on a couple of fronts. You're here with Bluefin. Obviously, yes. you here you have a booth, but you yes. are also here with Wave It. So tell me a little bit about that. Yes. So women in AV and IT. Uh, Wave It. We started um, in January, so we're still kind of ramping up, mm -hmm. um, but we're really um, we're trying to keep, retain, and empower women in the AV industry. As you know, Avix announced that uh, before COVID, we were at 14% women in AV, and now we're down to 11%, they announced. So um, 
We're really working. We've done a lot of things this year. We're still working on a few things, but we did an internship. We partnered with American Music and Sound, Very cool. and they're doing a marketing internship, so we helped promote that. They got over 120 applicants. That's amazing. Yes, that was exciting. Um, Pace University is doing an AV minor, so we're partnering with them. Cool. So there's a lot of cool things that we're doing because we really want to educate women um, and encourage women to stay in the AV industry. What I really like about Wave It too is we're agnostic. We're not tied to any industry association. We're trying to partner with like other companies, gals and gears, other organizations. So that's the fun part. Yeah. And that's awesome. I think that there is room for partnerships with, you know, virtually every organization in this industry because it's something that everyone does and should care about. Yes. So there is a lunch tomorrow with a talk. So do you want yes. to tell me a little bit about that? So um, earlier this year, Wave It actually acquired Women of Digital Signage, and it was a great marriage of the two because Wave It is AV and IT, mm -hmm. and, you know, digital signage is a part of, you know, AV and IT. Exactly. So, Earlier this year, like I said, we acquired the Women of Digital Signage, and so Wave It is sponsoring um, the Women's Lunch tomorrow, and the topic is Empowering Women, Best Career Advice, because we really you know, want to retain people um, in this industry and grow, but uh, this is a great opportunity for veterans mm -hmm. or newbies to come, men and women, mm -hmm. um, like what's your best career advice? So it's an interactive panel, but it's also, um, we're leaving these cards on the tables for, you can fill it out, a recipe for success. Cool. And so you can participate. So we're getting the, the actual, um, um, attendees of the luncheon to mm -hmm. participate in it. Um, where we're going to record it all, we did beforehand on market share. People uh, that weren't at DSC were able to record like their best career advice, and we're playing it on nice. uh, the screen behind us. So we're at the keynote stage, that big one that's in the corner over there. Okay, exciting. <laughs> And yes. you're going to be moderating the talk. I am. Are you First excited? Time. Yes, a little okay. nervous, but excited. Yes. So we have a great panel of women that are up there. So um, I'm really excited to, uh, you know, have everybody share their little nuggets of knowledge mm -hmm. of, you know, what they found successful. And I was actually having lunch with one of the ladies that's on the panel to, uh, yesterday. And uh, we were talking about our best career advice. And, like, her interpretation of it was different than mine. Okay. It was my career advice. So that was like, it opened my eyes. And that's right. really the big thing. It's an in-person networking event, you know, and it's that connection. Mm -hmm. And that's what is really fun and exciting about the luncheon tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to hear about everyone's insights and a little bit about like everyone's best career advice as someone who's kind of just, you know, at kind of the beginning of my own career in AV. So, you know, I'm definitely going to be tuned in and listening. Good, good. Well, I hope you can make it. Of course. So it's tomorrow, 12 noon. We're the last ones to go, so we can always stick around and network afterwards, okay, too. Okay, perfect. And we got some cool swag. Oh, you know, I love swag. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how people can find more information about Wave It and how they could potentially join, because it's open to everyone in the yes. industry. Yes. We are, it's Wave It. So it is womeninavnit.org. We actually have extended our membership, initial number, membership of $29. We're extending that. Um, we're not raising the price. Um, we're looking for more people to join. We have... 11 different committees we would Very love cool. for people that when you fill it out when you go to womeninav.org and you fill out your membership you can join different committees and volunteer um, so more the merrier perfect well thank you so much susan as always it was good getting to talk to you and getting always. to just catch up thanks all right Steph. of course thank, thank you. you all right well i think that that is it for this episode of rave tv i'm going to show you guys a little bit about what the dse show floor looks like next keep in mind i did this right when the show floor opened so i was kind of still getting to know the show floor myself so if it seems like i'm confused it's because i am so enjoy that and you know this has been another episode of rave tv and you can go to all of our dsc coverage at ravepubs.com forward slash dsc 
Hey everyone, Steph Beckett here, coming to you live from DSC 2023. Um, this is the very beginning of the first day of the show. We pretty much ran in as soon as they cut the ribbon. So I am kind of getting to know the show floor with you guys. Usually Gary is with me, but he is not able to make this show. So you are just gonna watch me do this whole thing solo. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of walk around, show you guys a few of the things that I know about or that I knew was coming or that I'm excited that I saw when I just walked in. So first thing, let's take a look at Max Hub right quick. Max Hub ha is focusing on its IFPs here at this show. Um, so this is, I think, the one I saw them with the most. Uh, this is like doing all in one, and this is kind of like conference rooms, but it can also be classrooms, but it can also go kind of in any corporate environment that you can think of. It's all in one. Um, it has its own camera integrated at the very top, and it's got a microphone array there too as well as speakers and microphones on the sides um, so that's just kind of what they've got they've got them all on carts so they can be easily rolled around here at this show so let's uh let's let's go look at the rest of the show while we are just kind of walking around getting to know everything here so if you want to take a look around here is dse's the park over to my right we are heading over to this mysterious contraption that kind of looks a little bit like the Epcot ball. I was very interested to see what's inside there. Um, I think it's got some dome projections, which should be very awesome. Um, DSC is focusing a lot on content here at this show. Um, not as much on hardware, although there are hardware people here. I, from me walking around, I've mostly noticed that it is a lot of like CMS, digital signage content management, that type of thing. So here is this Epcot ball contraption. This is done by Full Dome Pro. So they have a bunch of projectors on the inside and they are kind of using it to show how they can project on the inside of a dome, which is very difficult to do. There is a line to go inside right now. So we might not be able to fully make it in, but maybe we can peek our heads in. So, I'm guessing this is what it would look like to watch a ballet from the inside of one of these. Reminds me a lot of the traveling Van Gogh projections that are done in like different areas across America. But yeah, I thought this was one of the coolest things on the show floor and a very cool way to watch content that you might already be familiar with. So let's continue on. All right, so let's go check out our friends over here at Vidiri, and then I'll take you to look at a few other content companies that you are probably very familiar with who are here at the show. So Vidiri is, they do a lot of like remote management, um, remote monitoring. They have a lot, they have like apps, device management, CMS. Um, I think a little bit of hardware too, but mostly software. So they are kind of showing like the, how you can very easily go from like paper signage to digital signage and what that does for like your retail environment. Um, and you know, saving paper because you only have to change out the content rather than changing out a sign every single time it's a lot easier for customers to understand what you're trying to do when you do that. And it looks better. So this is what their booth has. They've got a kiosk right here that could easily be integrated in the middle of a mall, used as wayfinding, potentially even in a restaurant, probably could be used in a few of these hotels in Vegas because I have not been able to find much wayfinding in any of these hotels. I've gotten lost in like three. So yeah, let's keep going here. So let's go take a look at a few of our other friends. Over here we've got TSI Touch. They do a lot of like interactive touch solutions for like, of course, digital signage, but also for video walls um, and like some more heavy on the Pro AV applications. So let's keep going here. All right. Of course, you guys know Bright Sign for their media players. They're showing, it looks like they're full, showing their full line of product uh, here. And it's, uh, it's pretty busy, pretty busy over here at Bright Sign. So I don't think 
there are many other external media player brands here. I think that they might be one of the only ones. Don't quote me on that. All right, so I've, this is kind of content row, it seems. So we have screen feed showing everything that they can do for digital signage content. Of course, we have Blue Zoo, which is like kind of more like a measurement tool, measuring like how interactive it is. I think it uses, I was, it was explained to me last year, I think it uses your cell phone to be able to measure how many people have like interacted with your digital signage. It's a pretty cool tool. So definitely check out Blue Zoo. They're a cool company. But of course we have Corbett over here another management company, but they also can do things for like meeting rooms, wayfinding, um, data visualization. They're a very cool company as well. And of course, Bluefin is another kind of digital signage content company with like, does a lot of customizable stuff. And of course, they're very busy because they are also a really, really big company in that space. Um, very cool people as well. Love all of them over there. So definitely check them out. We've got HD distributing. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at this over here. I don't know if you guys have heard of this company. I have not. So this is called Charger GoGo. -Go. Um, and apparently how it works is this can go in like a mall or a public space and you scan this code with your phone and these chargers actually come out of the wall and you can basically like rent them to charge your phone up and replace it when you're done. So I thought that that was very cool. I haven't really seen anything like that before. So I thought that that was definitely something to note and maybe something that we're going to see in a lot more public spaces in the future. So. This is kind of a short show floor tour, um, but you know, I'm getting to know the show floor just as you guys are. So we're kind of doing this all at the same time. Uh, so I hope you check out all of our product videos. They're going to be on our microsite, which is ravepubs.com forward slash DSC. Those are going to be uploaded, uploaded very soon. You can also check out everything from LDI, which, this, which is the show co-located with this one. And you can see that at ravepubs.com forward slash LDI. All right, everybody. That's been another trade show episode of Rave TV. I'll see you next time. It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary.